Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Amina and if you are new here, welcome, welcome. I produce content all about academia, juggling that with motherhood and productivity and I absolutely love it if you would subscribe to see more from me. Today's video is all about the credibility of sources. Now in research, we talk lots and I've done loads of videos like this on my channel before about how to read papers really quickly, how to analyze the results really quickly, how to then use this information that you've acquired to improve it into papers that you're writing or research papers that you're writing or how to understand it for a literature review etc but no one ever talks about whether or not a paper is actually credible or a source if, if you want is credible how do you decide whether a source is worth reading worth listening to worth repurposing and using in your actual research now there's actually i know that when i was at university there was a task that i had to do about to do credibility so looking at papers and saying whether they're credible or not so that's like a task within itself but even more so as a researcher yourself or as a student you're looking at papers you're looking at articles you're looking at books you're looking at bits of information on the internet twitter whatever and you're trying to determine whether or not this is a credible source to use in your literature review and actually within undergraduate and also master even PhD to be honest work and assignments part of the mark scheme always says something to do with the sources being credible and the sources being reliable the sources being accurate and this video hopefully will help you in order to work out whether or not your sources are accurate and whether or not they are appropriate to be used now there are I think five things to look out for and I'm going to go through them in today's video and I'll leave the timestamps for them down below as well in case you want to kind of skip through and go to a different section but this video will help you determine whether your sources are credible or not which ultimately will make sure that you end up kind of hitting those top marks in your assessment and your assignments when you come to write them so the first thing is the purpose what is the reason that this source exists now, is the purpose to educate? If it's to educate, then possibly it would be a credible source because the source is going to educate you of both sides. It should be unbiased and it should be very infographic. So it should kind of just, you know, give information in a kind of educational way. Whereas if the source is to, the purpose is to sell, then most likely it's going to be sort of pushy. It's going to use emotive language. And so it may not be as credible to use in your particular instance than a, a source that's maybe be educational and is this information clear so if it is you know if it does want to sell have they made it clear that this is an ad have they made it clear that they are selling a product have they linked to a particular product this is all really important now um, and it should be really obvious especially now with the changes in the regulations that like the advertising regulations on social media it should be really obvious what the purposes of that particular piece that you're looking at especially when it comes to research papers as well it will always say sort of who's funded the paper so if it's a if it's a particular paper that you're looking at and it's talking about research that is let's say or let's say pro vaccine for example most likely it will be funded by a pharmaceutical company so you need to decide whether or not that's a source that you want to look at because you know obviously their intentions are going to be towards a positive view of vaccines so you need to think about things like that when discussing credibility and when thinking about whether what the purpose is of a, of a particular source the second thing is the authority authority is kind of split into two so you've got a which is the authority of the source and b the authority of the publisher itself so for the authority of the source you need to think about who is the source so who is the person that has written or has designed or has created this piece of content have they got some contact details there so are they reachable are you able to ask them some further questions if you want to have they got credentials like if they're talking about you know i'm here doing this video about academia and my whole channel is about phd and productivity do i have the credentials to back that up you know am i someone who hasn't even got a degree am i someone who hasn't done anything to do with phds and i'm here telling you about phds like what are my credentials and have i made that clear to you so you understand whether or not what where this source is coming from and whether or not it's accurate and then the second part is the authority of the publisher so where is this information where has it been published has it been published on a like a news website what kind of website is it is it a .gov website for example so that means it's a government website so they're going to have obviously their own ideas as well and their own sort of agendas where is that published and who why are they publishing this information are they publishing it because they've been paid to are they publishing it because they are informing you or kind of addressing an issue what is the reason for it because again this will let you know whether or not a source is credible to be used if you've taken it from a website that is you know can be edited by anyone and that is the kind of I guess the accuracy of that website then maybe you need to think 
twice about taking that and including it in your reference list because that will be frowned upon when your lecturer or your professor goes to look at that. The third is accuracy. So accuracy is can this information be verified? How reliable and how true is this content? So if they've given numerical uh, data, how, have they backed it up? Have they used statistical analysis? Can they justify? Have they included this in, in their methods and their materials? Um, how accurate is this data and how have, the, how have they presented this data? And also where does the information come from? So if you've taken a source and they've said some, they, they've given percentages and some data points and where have they taken it from? Have they taken it from a research paper? Have they made their own analysis? Have they spoken to someone? Have they taken it from a secondary source? So now they're like the tertiary source. Where has this information come from? Again, it's really important because it means that if you're taking this information at face value and that information is not credible, then your work is now inaccurate. And again, you won't hit those top marks in your assignments. Also, when it comes to accuracy, you wanna look at the actual text itself. Has it got good spelling? Has it got good grammar? is it written well and has it come from another source so is it secondary source or is it an original source because when it comes to reference you want to think about what kind of source you have which will determine how you are going to reference that source so think about it a lot don't just take any reference or don't just take any paper or any article and just say right that says what i wanted to say i'm going to reference that think twice is this the original paper is this the paper that was published in the first instance have they twisted things have they changed things why are they saying this what is the motivation behind it have to be paid to do this there's so many factors that come into it when you think about credibility but definitely accuracy is, is a really hot one especially when it comes to sort of research papers that have numerical data the next is relevance so how important is this topic to your work so i'm assuming you know you've been asked to find some credible research papers or you've been asked to find some credible sources for your work and you found a few sources okay now how does that relate to your research and or your particular document that you're writing up if the first source that you found is aimed at children and you're trying to write an article you're trying to write a piece of paper that is aimed at adults then maybe that isn't a credible source for you to use because that information is not for the same audience that you are presenting your information for so try to think about who that source was created for and you want to match what you are creating yourself also when it comes to relevance think about whether or not you're using the whole source so again going back to like a research paper if you've just taken one little result and you've just highlighted that result in your writing that's not really accurate because that means that you haven't and it's also not relevant because it means that you haven't given the full context of what you've just read so it's really important again here to look at the whole source and try to make sure that it matches up and it answers the question that you are discussing accurately and and, and i guess consistently the next the fifth point you want to look at when thinking about credibility is timeliness this means timeliness of the information so when was it actually published when was this information created now this is a big one that i always always talk about and i always point out when when editing work for students this is a paper that you've highlighted and you've based your whole discussion on this paper that was published 20 years ago now or 30 years ago now that's not relevant to today it's not a credible source anymore because since then there have been further studies that have been published there have been more work that has been done it's possible that this paper has been retracted or has been contradicted or there's other papers that have said something different to it and you're here using that paper as your base it's not a credible source you want your research depending on topic i usually say if this is 2022 i would say no more than five two to five years so i would say anything around nine 19 2016 17 18 that is as like as far back as i would accept really for my basic papers when it comes to giving more detail you're talking about the background of this protein fine talk about paper that was you know published 50 years ago that's not a problem but when you're discussing the problems with your you know, the gap in your literature you're discussing the issues the current issues and you're linking a paper that was published 30 years ago that's not relevant that means it's not credible and it means that your paper is no longer credible when you're writing because you're using sources that are old and outdated however like i said it does depend so if you're talking about a protein for example and you're talking about you know its structure and its function that may be set in stone that might have been discovered 30 40 years ago and that's fine it's fine to use that but when you're talking about the gap in literature when you're talking about issues that you're discussing today it has to be current and it has to be a source that has been 
looked at more recently. And then the last thing that you want to look at is comprehensiveness. So how comprehensive is your source? Has it given both sides of the story or is it just based on one side? Is it presenting both sides of the argument? Is it giving you alternatives? Is it giving you different points of view? How comprehensive is it with sort of summarizing the information that it's presenting? And if there are things that are left out, do you feel like that's left out because it, it was purposely left out? Or do you feel like it was left out because it, it just doesn't fit in with that discussion? or do you think it was left out because it they just forgot to leave forgot to include it think about this as well think about how you can try to justify or I guess support them in what they are trying to say and if they haven't said everything in a particular argument try to understand why because again that will tell you whether they're credible or not if they've purposely missed out on information or if they've missed out on information as a result of simply not having enough space or, or it not making sense for them for their audience so yeah, I hope that made sense. I hope that helped you identify ways in finding out whether a source that you have um, found is credible, if it's accurate, if it's something that you can use in a paper that you are presenting as your own. Remember that your reference list is a reflection of what you have read and is a reflection of what you want to share as an example of, you know, papers, sources that you have enjoyed or sources that justify your work. So it's key that you have thought about each of those sources, particularly when they come from like not journals. Journal papers are okay for the most part because they've kind of gone through this, but I'm talking more for like, you know, articles, maybe books, um, tweets, things that are social media posts, things that have not necessarily been peer reviewed because the peer review process kind of does this already for the most part. Um, but still, I think it's really important that you think about credibility really like quite thoroughly when you're discussing when you're thinking about what to include in your own research so i hope that was helpful let me know if you have any other tips when it comes to this and i'd absolutely love to see you subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment and i'll see you in my next one bye